Well, ho, 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 and Mary. Oh, oh no, Bad Bad, not yet. Come back in about a half an hour. I'm, I'm not done with my show yet. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas, boys and girls. Merry Christmas, indeed. Now, I've got a story for you all, so if you all just want to gather around the old table here and let old Uncle Spunky read you this beautiful Christmas tale. It's called Santa's Twin. It's by Dean Kuntz, who's one of my favorite authors. And he lives real close, so he's probably going to sue me for doing this. But you know what, Dean? I love you. And uh, let me do this, OK? Because it's something I've really wanted to do for a long time. Uh, do we got that picture in the cover somewhere? Let's, uh, let's give him some kudos. This is a really good story, boys and girls. It's called Santa's Twin. And, and so let me get started. Uh, Jimmy, no, I'm starting. You can't go to the bathroom yet. OK, Jimmy, just, just wait, all right? Uh, Melissa, will you just calm down? I got to read this story. All right, here we go. Well, now, Thanksgiving is safely passed. More turkey, eat, more turkey eaten this year than last. More stuffing stuffed, more yams jammed into our mouths using both of our hands. Coleslaw and slews, biscuits and twos, and all of us too fat to fit in our shoes. Well, I can relate to that. So let's look ahead to the big holiday that's coming, coming our way. I'm sure you know just what day I mean. It's not Easter Sunday. Oh, uh, no, not Halloween. It's the day to be, it's not the day to be sad, our list list. It's a day of wonder. It's Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Charlotte and Emily, they're the little girls in this story, love this season. They're kids, so they have a good reason to dream all year of that special eve because they are truly and deeply believe of gift-giving fat man that flies in the sky with toys and goodies galore. Uh, no lie, how about that? Now, soon he'll be up there on his way in a maximum cool cherry red sleigh with camouflage stars under the sides, taking the wildest of all thrill rides like a roller coaster on the tracks of air pulled by the reindeer, harnessed in pairs. Oh, I love those little reindeers, especially Rudolph. He's got such a soft tail. So someday soon, they'll put up a tree. Why only one? Maybe two, maybe three. Deck it with tinsel and baubles of bright. It'll be an amazing, wonderful sight. That's right. Stirring colored lights out on the roof. Pray none are broken on anything's hoof. Salt down the shingles to melt all the ice. If Santa fell, it just wouldn't be very nice. He might fracture his leg or even be cut, perhaps even break his jolly old butt. Oh, well, we don't want him to do that now, do we? Uh, they don't want Santa's butt in a sling. What a ghastly, bad, unthinkable thing. Oh, wait, I just heard the terrible news. Hope it won't give you the Christmas blues. Santa's mugged, tied up and gagged, blindfolded, <laughs> stoppled, and bagged. Not Santa. He's locked in his cellar under the pole, down in the dismal, deep, deep, dark hole. Oh, his sleigh is waiting out in his yard, and someone has stolen his bank card. Well, soon his accounts will all be picked clean by the use of automatic teller machines. And what will happen to all the toys all the, and the gifts for all the little girls and boys? Oh, Santa, how are we going to save Santa? Hark! The sound of silver sleigh bells echoes high over the hills and the dells. And look, the reindeer are far up in the sky. Some silly goose has taught them to fly. The driver giggles quite like a loon, more like a madman, a goofball, a thug, or a goon. Something's wrong. I'm telling you right now, any fool can tell. If this is Santa, then Santa's not doing too well. He, his mean little eyes spin like tops. So somebody better quickly, quickly call them cops. And I mean you better hurry because this is going to be trouble. A close look confirms his psychosis. And oh my dear, it's really halitosis. Beware when Christmas comes this year, because there's something new to fear. Santa's twin, who is very rude and very mean, 
Who stole his sleigh and will soon make the scene. He's pretending his good brother. Guard your beloved children, oh mother. Down the chimney into your home. Here he comes, that deeply troubled gnome. Oh no, boys and girls, this guy's not too nice. The reindeer sweep down out of the night. See how each is brimming with fright. Tossing their heads and rolling their eyes, these gentle animals are also very, very wise. They know this Santa isn't their friend, but an imposter with a far around the bend. They would stampede for all their worth and dump this nut off the edge of the earth. But Santa's bad brother carries a whip, a club, a chocolate cream pie at his hip, a blackjack, spitballs, you better run, because you know what? He's got a fearful, horrible, wicked ray gun. Oh man, those evil Santas can get toys that we can't. They land on the roof, quiet and sneakily. Oh, but this Santa is fearfully freaky. He whispers a warning to each so they hear, your relatives are back at the pool, and I've got them all tied up, those innocent souls. So if you fly off while I'm inside, back to the pool on a plane I will ride. I'll have a picnic in the midnight sun, reindeer pie, pate, and reindeer on a bun. Reindeer salad, hot reindeer soup, oh, all sorts of wonderful, tasty reindeer goop. That's one mean Santa there. You know what, Timmy, I told you not to go to the bathroom. I mean, I, I, how many times do I have? Oh, Timmy, you, you peed all over the floor. Oh, uh, dear, will you clean up Timmy? He just peed all over the floor. I, well, I know it's a scary story. I'm sorry, okay? Well, no, I'm not sorry. Oh, back to the, back to the story, boys and girls. At the chimney, he looks down the bricks, but that entrance is strictly for the hicks. With his tools, a way can be found for a fat bearded burglar from out of town. From roof to backyard to kitchen door, he chuckles about what he has in store. For the good family that's sleeping within, he grins his biggest, nastiest grin. Oh, what a creep, what a scum, what a loose. He's boldly breaking into their house. With picks, Lloyds, gizzles, and socks, he quickly, silently opens all the locks. He enters the kitchen without a sound. Now his devilment is truly abound. He opens the fr I'm sorry I'm spitting all over you, okay? Do you want to read the story? Now, he opens the fridge and eats all the cake, pondering what sort of mess he can make. First he pours the milk all over the floor, pickles, pudding, ketchup, and more. Oh, what a mess this Santa's making, I say, I say. He scatters the bread, white and rye, and finally he spits right into the pie. And you know, I so love pie on Christmas. You, you Santa. At the corkboard by the phone and the stool, he sees drawings the kids did at school. Emily has painted a kind, smiley face, and Charlotte has drawn elephants in space. And I think Spilly might be out there in space too somewhere. The villain takes out a red felt tip pen, taps it, uncaps it, and chuckles and then. Of both pictures, he scrawls the word poo. He always knows the worst things to do. I mean, this guy's really mean, don't you think? He's eviler than my grandma. His mad giggles continue to bubble while he gets into far greater trouble. He's hugely more evil than brave. So then, after he loads up the microwave with 10 pounds of popcorn, oh man, he turns and runs right out of the room because the old governor's gonna go boom. Oh, 10 pounds of popcorn. That's what I had at the movie last night. That's not that much, boys and girls. Anyway, here we go. He prowls the downstairs, wicked and mean, looking to cause yet one more bad scene. When he sees the presents under the tree, he says, time for a gift swapping spree. I'll take out all the really good stuff and then give him some dead fish, some poop and some fluff. And I got lots of that fluff stuff. I have three animals at home and they got a lot of fluff. 
In the morning, those kitties will find coffee grounds, peach pits, orange rinds, old stones, mud pies, rotten potatoes, hairballs, dead fish, and spoiled tomatoes. Instead of nice sweaters and games in those toys, they'll get slimy, stinky stuff that really annoys. <laughs> Charlotte and Emily are up in their beds, dreaming of Christmas, filling their heads. Suddenly a sound startles those sleepers. They'll sit up in bed and open their peepers. Nothing should be stirring, not even one mouse, but the girl scents a villain, someone in the house. You can call it psychic, a hunch or osmosis, or maybe they smell a troll talentosis. They'll leap out of bed, forgetting their slippers, too brave, too little slippers. Something's amiss, young Emily whispers, but they can't handle it. They're sisters. So look at this Santa. Can you guys see this Santa Claus at home? He's getting into all that goo and leaving it in the boxes, just like a stew. Down in the living room under a tree, Santa's evil twin is cohorting with glee. He's got a collection of gift replacements taken from the dumps, the sewers, and basements. He replaces a nice watch meant for Lottie with a nasty gift for a girl who was naughty. The one thing that Lottie has never been, forgetting her vitamins was her biggest sin. In place of the watch, he wraps up a clot of horrid, glistening, greenish toad snot. From a package for Emily, he steals the doll and gives her a new gift that'll surely appall. It's a slimy rancid, and it's starting to fizz. Not even the villain knows what it is. The stink could stop a big runaway truck. It's so gooey and gluey. Oh, it's such a muck. Well, the girls think it's really Santa and, and they want to see. So in their jammies and slippers, now on the prowl, <coughs> the girls go looking for whatever's a foul. Right to the top of the stairs they zoom, making less noise than a moth in a tomb. They're so both delicate, slim and petite, and both of them have such tiny pink feet, just like you, Melissa, yes, just like you. How can these small girls hope to fight a Santa who's liable to kick and bite? He's got a chocolate cream pie for throwing, and that fearful ray gun is softly glowing. Are the girls trained in Taekwondo? No, no, I'm afraid the answer is no. Grenades tucked in their jammy pockets? Lasers implanted in their eye sockets? No, no, I'm afraid the answer is still no. Yet down the shadowy stairs they go. The danger below they can't comprehend. This Santa has, gar has gone too far round the bend. He's meaner than flu, two aches and blisters, but they're tough too because they're sisters. So there's Santa, he's hiding over there. In the front room, at one of the trees, the bad Santa's twin is down on his knees, giggling as he stuffs another gift box with a few pairs of smelly old socks. He snorts and he chorts with an evil glee and mutters, no one will know that it's me. They'll blame my brother, Kris Kringle. The next Christmas, the merry jingle of sleigh bells will alarm and terrorize. Every little kid will watch the skies and scream aloud when the sleigh appears for 100, 200, maybe 300 years. Santa Claus will be feared, distrusted, because everyone will soon be disgusted. By all the tricks that I play this night, they'll never forgive the harm and the fright. The toad snot and the snail spit, the slime, the scheme is mine. Ah, superb, superb, sublime. The gift wrapped in broccoli in the spinach. Oh my good, good brother is finished. Brussels sprouts, candy, and unsweetened yams, chicken gizzard jelly, lima bean jams, boxes full of spiders, worms, and bugs. Oh, old Santa won't be getting no more hugs. <laughs> Ah, 
Instead, kids will scream, run and hide. Not one child on earth will soon abide. The sight of this jolly, merry old face, the cops will be hunting every place. Searching the alleys, the cellars and attics, from tropical jungles up to the Arctic. If they jail him, won't that be funny? Then I'll go after the Easter Bunny. <laughs> that poor little bunny doesn't stand a chance. Well, boys and girls, isn't this an interesting story? I sure hope you're having fun. And Timmy, it's good to see you got some dry PJs on. Well, I'm almost done. From the doorway, the girls have heard every shocking, every horrible, despicable word. Christmas is now, there's a loan to save. They must be bold, they must be brave. Ah, the troll has left his gun out of reach. Emily sneaks to it. Isn't she a peach? Lottie makes a fist of her small hands. Oh, the time has come to make a stand. Holding the ray gun, Emily says, freeze. The troll insists, better say please. He rises, he's giant, he turns and he growls. He hisses, grumbles, and softly he howls. His eyes spin, his nose spouts steam. He's Santa's monster from a bad dream. Capering and threading, boogie oogie boo. Lottie says, we're not scared of you. The elf declares, I eat kids for lunch. I eat them for breakfast, even for brunch. Sometimes I eat children for supper too, baked in a crust or cooked in a stew. And you know how much Spilly Chili likes his stew. Lottie says, listen, mister, you're framed. Your brother and you ought to be ashamed. Waving the ray gun, young Emily commands, up with your hands, up with your hands. This alien weapon will turn you to dust or maybe to cinders or maybe to rust, or maybe two cornflakes, or something for mice. Whatever it does, I'm sure it's not nice. The troll is not merely evil, but quick. Up from his big sleeves, he has one more trick. From the hip of his holster, he suddenly draws the chocolate cream pie. He has no laws. He's a gangster, a thug, a bad boy indeed. He flings the pie with fearful speed. Lottie studies the ballet and has quite grace. She spins, but still gets some pie in her face. And you know, pie in our face is something that we deal a lot with around here. Emily fires the rain gun. Oh no, oh no. The living room magically fills with snow. It's a weather gun, some strange device. The fireplace mantle is now all hung with ice. From out of the ceiling, a blizzard falls, drifting over the furniture and up the walls. Oh, criminy, that wasn't much of a ray gun. The Malvian elf can't repress a giggle. For this one, child, you cannot wiggle. For this big mess, you won't be thanked. In fact, I bet you're gonna get spanked. Ha, ha, ha. Spanked so hard that your ears will slip all the way down, down to your lips. Then instead of cooking them a stew or brewing some tasty little brew, giggling trolls flees into the night. The girls give chase, cause it just isn't right that he should be allowed to skip and to run after ruining Christmas and spoiling the fun. Like many bullets, he's blustery and bluff. He's not really made of very stern stuff. The two girls chase him down the front door. He slips and he slides across the floor, falls down a step, flat on the ground, and lands with a rubbery, blubbery sound. I would imagine that's something like blah, 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 blah. But you don't know, because I wasn't there. I'm just reading the story. The sisters run barefoot in the snow to make sure he doesn't jump up and go. Knock him silly, that's what we'll do, asked Charlotte as her pink feet turned blue. Suddenly, eight reindeer descend from above, each reindeer flying from the grace like a dove to the snowy lawn in front of the house, making less sound than even one wary mouse. A deer says, Christmas mustn't be bleak. 
since when do reindeer speak? Magic reindeer, Charlotte supposes. In agreement, the deer twitched their noses. One reindeer looks at Charlotte's face and says, my, what a very unusual place to find chocolate pudding on Christmas night. Lottie replies, I was in a pie fight. Girls, you must come with us to the pole. Santa's in a dismal, deep, dark hole. We've deliveries to make, games and toys, to millions and millions of little goys and boys, just like you little goys and boys down here. The sisters are dressed for the pole, or especially not no deep, dark hole. So the reindeer wiggle their magic snoots. Now the girls are standing in jackets and boots. Now how come I don't have any reindeer like that, boys and girls? Now when I'm out there in the cold and they can just wiggle their noses and give me some nice boots. Now that would really be something, wouldn't it? Well, I guess they're Christmas reindeers. Well, let's get back to the story. Pajamas transform into snowsuits of red. Nothing at all like they wore to bed. Woolly mittens, long scarves, and jaunty caps. What about a driver's license and maybe some maps? Huh? That's a long way to the North Pole. No maps are needed, hard the deer say. No license required to drive this sleigh. Just a lot of faith and a good pure heart. That's all you need to do your part. Well, they still got a big problem. The problem with Santa's bad twin, who's flat on the ground, belly and chin. He's knocked out cold. Why does he snore? Loading him in the sleigh is gonna be such a chore. First, the old troll must be tied up tight to prevent trouble the rest of the night. So they bind him fast with jump ropes and slinkies and tie his long mustache to his little fat pinkies. Lifting him into the sleigh, they'll fail because he weighs half as much as a whale. But the reindeer's nose twitch the magic is back. Something stirs in Santa's sack. Teddy bears, stuffed dogs, toys, monkeys too, all spring to life. It's a magical zoo. They help the little girls load up the evil claws using their hands, their tails, and their paws. Can you just imagine, boys and girls, how cool it would be to see all those animals come to life? It's like the other day when I took some acid and all the animals were like moving around on the TV set and it was like really beautiful, you know? Well, it's kind of like that, I would imagine, having those magical reindeers. I know Bobby can relate to having magical reindeers. With a huffing and puffing, the job gets done. Although heaving an evil claws is not so much fun. The last toy returns to the sack with a wave and Lottie grabs the, way, the reins. Oh gosh, she's so brave. And the sleigh, Emily sits by her side and says to the deer, let's start this crazy ride to the top of the world, up in the sky. Let's see if these reindeers really know how to fly. Up into the night, the eight reindeers spring. The bells on their harnesses all softly ring. Up towards the stars and the big frosty moon, Charlotte says, I think I'm going to swoon. Oh, Charlotte. No, no, says Emily. We must save St. Nick. And I think possibly we might be getting sick. I'm woozy and my head is spinning around. Oh, I just got to hold those cookies down. And you know what Christmas time, boys and girls, when you eat too many Christmas cookies the night before Christmas, you're sure to throw up all over Santa. So don't eat all those cookies before bedtime. You don't want to get sick on Santa, Melissa, I'm telling you. He won't give you any good presents if you're throwing up all over him. And Timmy, look, any more drinks and you're going to pee again. So will you just stop? Thank you. Thank you, Timmy. Okay, here we go. We're, al we're almost done. We're almost done. Reindeers are flyers of fabulous skill. The turbulence passes and all is still. Across the deep sea of stars they sail. And our little Emily is no longer pale. A head and airliner appears in the sky. That's no surprise because airliners can fly. The reindeers soar high over the craft, but a passenger sees and thinks himself daft, like me. I see things flying around in the sky all the time. And I, yeah, I think I'm crazy. I am crazy, so there you have it. Um, a moon shadows of the deer slide over the wing, a breathtaking, beautiful thing. The passengers soon will arrive home tonight. 
holding his heart with a brand new life. See, he doesn't think he's crazy anymore. The plane is now gone and the North Pole looms. The sleighs arcs down and the reindeers go zoom. Toward the hard, endless, icy wasteland, Emily says, Lottie, give me your hand. Straight down and down and down some more. They're going to see so much blood and gore. Emily says, oh, we're going to crash. But one reindeer says, oh, don't be so rash. Believe in Santa and look down again. Believing makes the difference. And so then, you'll see Santa's village spread out below. What a wonderful old land of ice and snow. I see it, says Emily. Oh, I really do. I see it, I see it, Charlotte says too. Cottages, lamplights, and gleaming spirals. Colored lights, invisible wires. Trees hung with icing, gingerbread shrubs, bottled root beer, and street corner tubs. Movie theaters where shows play for free, and popcorn and ice cream. Oh, golly gee. Now see, I like to live there, boys and girls, in a beautiful place like that, where you can have all the ice cream and popcorn and watch free movies. Oh, but then don't throw up on Santa. We gotta remember that. The reindeer land on their delicate feet, racing swiftly along the glittering street. The golden heart of the village square to the house and houses standing there. No doubt it's a house of Santa Claus. The girls recognize it at once because carved over the door in a lintel of wood, he knows if you've been naughty and he knows if you've been good. Well, that's got to be Santa's house. The village seems deserted, quite eerily quiet. A dropping pin would sound like a riot. No sign at all of the toy-making elves what might have taken themselves. A reindeer says, their good work is done. Now they're all on vacation having fun. In Tahiti, Jamaica, Pittsburgh, and France, some went to Texas. They like the square dance. Well, you know, just watch out for Crawford. Those people there, you know, they, they square dance because they're such squares. Where's Mrs. Claus? Emily asks with awe. Bernice, says the deer, she's at a spa in California, probably in Santa Cruz over at Kiva House or something like that. Somewhere on the coast, bathing in the sun, she's getting as brown as toast. Santa always joins her on Christmas Day. It's their once a year chance to get away. By the middle of January, they'll come back to start filling next year's big boy sack. Lottie and Emily spring from the sleigh dashing to Santa's house straight away. The door is ajar. Blame the bad twin. They push it open and dare to go in. The hallway glows with a warm, twinkly light. Guided coffee paneled just right. No sign of Santa, but there's some mud. The bad twin tracked in. Oh no, there's a thud. A thud from the cellar far down below. No time to waste, the two girls go. To a massively timbered door they spy, and down the cellar stairs they fly. Down, down, around and down some more, and a lantern light to a cold stone floor. A huge burlap bag spotted with grime. This is it, the scene of the crime. Untie the knot, quick, open the sack. Santa's inside, pull the burlap back. Off with the blindfold, off with the gag, off with these ropes, and out of the bag. He jumps to his feet, almost topples, steadies himself, pops his ears, stopples. Dear girls, how well you behaved. Without you, Christmas would not be saved. Oh, this Santa, no doubt about that, from his boots to his pom-pom hat. See, I have one of those too. He's radiant, glorious, a sight to behold, the elf of whom so many stories have been told. He laughs, ho, 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 bat, bat, not yet. His merry eyes shine. His sweet, kindly smile is simply divine. You're Emily and Charlotte, I know you. You're two good girls through and through. I never had to bring you lumps of coal and one of my animal trips from the pole. Those were magic ropes, blindfolded and gagged. Only good kids could free me from that bag. 
says Emily. The bad claws is in the sleigh, tied up and tight. Now let's be on our way. We must save Christmas, it's getting late. Lottie says, hold on a minute, just wait. I'm wondering why, at this magic pole, your cellar is such a deep, dark hole. Santa winces and sighs, also dismal and dank. When we first moved in, it really stank. We have a problem with groundwater seepage and it really persists purple fung creepage. Fungus everywhere. Girls, everyone has troubles, even Santa Claus. So be merry and happy. And that's the way Saint Nick would have it all the time anyway. So here we are. The story is almost over, boys and girls. We got Santa Claus, he's all tied up. It's looking like we're gonna be right on track for a Santa. Let's see what happens. Back in the square in front of the house, the little stuffed toys unloaded the louse, who's wrapped in jump ropes and the slinkies. His mustache is still secured to his pinkies. He's wide awake now, not so half fearful. The real Santa Claus is going to give him an earful. What in the world were you trying to do? Surely you're not bad through and through. Confused, misguided, no doubt about that. You wear my suit well, especially the hat. Always be nice to the kids and give them a smile, and then they'll love you too, maybe after a while. Emily says, be nice as you were taught. When you were bad, you're always going to get caught. And what if we told your mom what you have done? What if we told your mom what you have done? Then would being bad really be fun? Lottie says, you even hit me with a pie. If your mom knew it at all, wouldn't she cry? Emily shakes her finger. Oh, shame on you. Don't you know before everything you do, you must ask yourself how mom would feel to know you'd done it. That is the seal of approval and guidance is all that we need to help us be good and to do good deeds. See, boys and girls, it's really not that hard if you just try. And maybe even evil Santa will learn his lesson. Let's see. The bad claws' eyes welled up with tears. He sniffles, then blubbers when he hears. The girl mentioned mother. Oh, please. But for the slinkies, I'd be on my knees, begging you not to tell dear Mama Claus all the bad things I've done because she's the sweetest and kindest of souls you'll ever find between the two poles. I've been thoughtless, so mean and so bad, but I never wanted to make my mama sad. I've been a bad, bad boy as a boy could be because I never thought mama would see. Now Lottie says, no one can fool his mother any more than a kill kids can fool your brother. Sooner or later, every mom knows if you've been good or bad, it shows. Scary, I know, but that's how it goes. Now stop blubbering and wipe your nose. You're starting to look like Spilly out in the parking lot. Snow begins to fall from the polar skies as Santa says, girls, you are both wise. I'm giving you two brand new blue bikes and to your parents, whatever each likes. And you will come along to share the joy as I bring my gifts to all the good girls and boys. Unslinking with the jump ropes unwound, Santa's brother leaps up from the ground. Let's hurry and undo all I've done, or this Christmas won't be much fun. The crowded sleigh, two closets, two girls, rockets into the sky as the snow swirls. Good reindeer. I'm sorry for all I said, all the meanness. I should have stayed in bed. So explains the previously twisted twin, who's better now than he's recently been. Lottie and Emily are afraid that the crime can't be undone. There's too little time. But Santa can deliver a single hour by stretching time with his magical power. Yeah, that's like when I worked in the accounting department at UCSC and hours went by days and by weeks. And I was still sitting there in that damn cubicle, just like Santa. Flying like a comet, chased by the sun, they sneak past every police radar gun. Because you know what? 
If they pulled over Santa and he didn't know what was in those packages, he'd end up with Gitmo and all that crap because they think he was a terrorist delivering bombs. You know, that's not cool. The, and you know, and, uh, what's Santa supposed to do? You know, is he gonna get patted down and push through uh, scanners? Could you imagine Santa in a scan Santa in a scanner? Ah, oh, boy. Well, let's see. We're almost done here. Flying a comet, chased by the sun, they sneak past every police radar gun. The best trick of all, at any one time, is that they can be in all places, many at one time. How is this possible? No one explains. Leaving the girls with the headache pains. At last all the gifts have been given away, and the still night hasn't turned until day. They race the sun to the girls' little place, where soon it's the time for them to face. Mom and Dad on the snowy front lawn. Someone might be spanked before dawn. Well, them parents, you know, it sounds like they're probably child abusers. And, you know, if they think it's okay to hit their kids after they save Christmas, well, we're going to have to have a talking with them and send old Steve Wilkos over there. Pour pouring out through the open door is popcorn. And from the windows, oh, more. Popcorn is popped from the chimney, too. Oh, what a terrible thing did I do? Ask the once bad claws who now behaves. 10 pounds of corn and the microwave. Oh no. Can, can more damage be done than I ever thought? Gee, I have to admit, I was never taught to be such a mischievous fat old fart. I am totally ashamed. And uh, yeah, you know, when you put a bunch of popcorn in the popcorn maker, you know what's gonna happen? It's just like putting foil in the popcorn maker. It doesn't work too well. well down the front yard, the reindeer fly. Mom and dad are waiting to be told why. Their house has become a popcorn machine, waking them from their Christmas dreams. They stand in their pajamas, robes, and their slippers, gazing up at the sleigh flying zippers. Well, that must be those reindeers up there is all I can think. I've never heard that word before. Well, from, from the sleigh into mom and dad's arms, both the girls use their clever child charms to keep Santa's brother from being paddled. Forgive him, he was temporarily addled. But he can't help our Christmas be put back on track. He'll never again stuff Santa in a sack. But Santa says, I'm Santa and this is my twin. His name is Bob, won't you let us come in to clean up this mess and set things right before dawn puts an end to this magical night. Your house is the last stop on our journeys. And since I sincerely hope we can avoid any attorneys, you know, I don't have the money. My Mrs. Claus is gonna get really pissed if I have to hire uh, Glory Aldrich to handle this case. So Santa says, I assume the answer is yes. Then he and Bob in three minutes or less vaporize all the popcorn and clean up the mud and magically transform the toast knot and crud into gifts that are sure to please everyone and to ensure Christmas morning will be non-stop fun. Ho, 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 ho. It's such a wonderful time, Santa says. Wow, folks. I'm telling you, this Santa Claus is pretty okay in my books, you know? He's really cool to be going around and traveling and giving people gifts. Well, what happens? It looks like he's getting ready to go home. Out in the front yard, each girl gets a hug from each of the clauses. Oh, they're cute as a bug. Each girl, that is. Well, well, each clause, too. Bob says, I left a big brown cow for you. Prettily gift wrapped by one of the trees then Santa wants Bob to turn over his knees. Bob says, giving a cow, that's not mean. Remember with milk, we can make ice cream. Santa gives his brother a very stern look and Bob decides to operate more by the book. Okay, I'll change the cow into a puppy. Better yet, I'll make it a little small black puppy. Then into the big sleigh, each clause bounds. Mom and dad are still making curious sounds. Gasps of surprise, squeaks and peeps. What is this particular problem that keeps grown-ups from accepting the magic is real? 
and that it's okay to believe in what you feel. Into the night, eight reindeer take flight. Big soaring sleigh is a wonderful sight. Then Santa and Bob call from high, yo Lottie, yo Emily, goodbye, goodbye. Believing in magic, you save Christmas day. Keep believing in us, even after we've gone away. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Well, boys and girls, that wraps up that beautiful story of San Jose twin, Dean Kuntz. If you want to read this to your boys and girls, you can get it at the public library or any one of our fine book establishments here in town. And with that, boys and girls, I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Uncle Spunky and all of the Chili family. Good night. <laughs>